look, you know me. I love all these shows. I live tweet about them when they, when they air every single week. I love reality competition. It's a once in a lifetime adventure. I think if any of these shows ever called me, I'd be crazy to say no. When you got the call for this show, what made you say yes? And did you have any hesitation? When I first got the phone call to do the challenge, I was a little skeptical. I was like, is this even real? Like, is this actually going to happen? But I think deep down with me being such a fan of reality competition series, I would have been crazy not to even humor it. And then even after talking about it with Will, he was like, you're doing it. And I was like, oh, heck yes, I'm going to do this. So I think it's just jumping at the bit for a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, I thought that with The Amazing Race, but this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity striking twice. So I had to say yes to the challenge. Of course. And I know, because we know each other, you're a huge, huge um, reality TV fan. How familiar are you with the challenge Have you watched a lot of it? That kind of thing. Yeah, I've been watching the challenge since like when it was real world versus road rules. Like it was a show that I grew up with just like Survivor and The Amazing Race. So to be a part of it was a crazy, like weird dream come true because I never really thought it was going to be something that would happen for me. But then to throw in the mix, competing alongside Survivor legends, Big Brother legends and Love Islanders, like it was crazy (laughs) yeah so obviously i know you can't spoil things but you show up on the first day you see who's playing with you are you worried are you happy like who are you looking at like oh god there's a lot of big brother people or wow there's a lot of survivors there's only three amazing racers um what were your thoughts initially yeah i mean once i took off the fangirl goggles and actually looked and assessed the room um i was a little intimidated i'm not gonna lie just because these are people that i i mean i watch all these shows i i was familiar with every single person who was there on the challenge with me so to really kind of go down the line and see who each person was i would remember certain moments from their seasons what really made them stick out on their, you know, respective shows. So it was a little intimidating, but also like still just the fangirl in me was dying a little bit. Do you think you had a a little bit of a leg up? Like you, you know, all these people's games, right? Like I'm sure some people are not watching every season of everything, but because you're such a fan, were you like, okay, at least I know who these people are. I know what they're about. I know who's loyal. I know who's a little sneaky, things like that. Yeah, I definitely think having that knowledge gave me a leg up over some other people who may not watch all these shows. I knew the relationship dynamics going in, who had competed together before or who from Love Island used to date before. So I kind of already knew the big web of how these relationships worked. And then I, you know, was able to kind of figure out how I fit into that web of relationships. So Yeah, I I think that knowledge definitely was beneficial. And it's like, you know, with The Amazing Race, I prepared, we prepared our butts off to do that. And the same thing with this challenge. You know, I I familiarized myself with the show by going back and rewatching episodes and then having just familiarity of the other shows who are competing on the challenge with me definitely, definitely helped. Yeah, that was such a big part of your Amazing Race journey was like you and Will studying and just being so prepared. Um, did you have a plan? Did you want to go in and adapt? Like, I guess what going into the game, did you have any strategy, uh, laid out or anything like that? Going into the challenge. I think it's always so difficult to go in with a plan just because again, watching so many seasons of the challenge, the format is, I think the biggest key and how you navigate the challenge overall. And so not knowing really what the format was going to look like. I didn't really want to go in with a set plan. Um, Did I have an idea of like who I wanted to maybe kind of get close with? Sure. But also there's only three amazing racers. So at the end of the day, I was like, what can I do to help myself, but also my fellow amazing racers, just because I think I would be a little naive to think going into this, that there wouldn't be at some point, some maybe show lines. And we'll have to wait and see if that actually is a factor in the challenge itself. Right. And because you're so involved with the reality TV world, um, who else, like what were your relationships prior to the game with like Leo and, and the amazing racers and then also the other people? Cause I'm sure you've crossed paths with a lot of these people before. 
Oh yeah. I mean, like, because I used to do an amazing race podcast for a few seasons, I was already very familiar with Leo. We have a, we have a friendship. We've met up a few times. He lives here in Los Angeles with me. So, I mean, not like with me, we're not roommates or anything, but he like lives down the street, but yeah, I like Leo is someone I had a friendship with. I had those relationships going in, but also I think just the reality community itself is pretty small. Um, and there's a lot of different events that people like to go to and participate in. And I think um, I, I, I had met some people before I got there, but not necessarily like on a close friendship level, like someone like Leo. And because you know, the shows and the challenges a little bit, I guess, what did you think would be um, something you would excel at? And where would you see like your weakness just in terms of challenges? Is it some of the physical stuff? Is it more like the mental, like the puzzles or trivia? Like, where did you kind of feel like you stacked up in those kind of challenges? I think one thing that I really love about the challenge is I think there's this sense of like brute strength is really what's going to take it all. And sure. I think you need to have a little bit of a physicality to it, but with the challenges you see in past seasons of the challenge, there's always a puzzle or some type of equalizer that balances out the physicality. So I knew going in, I mean, I definitely trained, I was doing personal training, um, two months before we left, just kind of getting my body used to just the physical aspects of the challenge. But I think with just how my experience was on the amazing race with puzzles and being very analytical and just the social dynamics of things, that's where I knew I think I was going to excel going into the challenge was being a social player. And then when it came to the challenges, really making sure that I just never gave up and reminded myself, hey, I won the amazing race and you can literally do anything after that. Yeah. I mean, and you also, to win the amazing race, you have to have some endurance. It's not easy to keep going and going. (laughs) Not at all. So I think that definitely helped prepare myself going into the challenge. And I've said this so many times as a a longtime fan of the challenge. And after seeing Jen on, what was that? Uh, The challenge, Total Madness. She was an amazing racer from season 29 who was on it. I remember saying to myself, the challenge needs more amazing racers. Cause if you really think about it, the way the challenge is kind of designed is very similar to how legs of the race are designed. There's always something physical. There's a, always something puzzle related or mental related. So I'm excited to see what amazing race is made up in the challenge. And because like amazing race, you know, you had your husband there, well, your, I guess, boyfriend at the time, yeah. but um, what was it like not having Will there? Was it weird? Like, Tell me about that experience. Cause even your prior experience in reality TV, I think you had your sister, right? So this time it's just you, how is that? I know that was the most surreal experience for me was being by myself. Yeah. I, the last experiences I had on reality TV, I had my sister and my now husband will, and it was definitely different. I think because with being with someone and competing with someone, you have this connection, you have this level of trust and loyalty in that other person you're competing with. When you're by yourself being thrown into a sea of, I think, sharks, it's really hard to um, balance how you're going to play the game because you can't really fully trust everyone. No one's really going to have their best, your best interests in mind just because it's a game where you want to win and it's only going to be you that gets you to the end. Um, I'm asking everyone this, but what do you think, do you think your reputation from your previous show might hurt or help you when you were first going into the house where you're like, okay, people see me as a strong, if they've seen my season, they, they see me as a strong player. Obviously I won a show. Do you think that people were going to look at you as a threat? Like, were you aware of, I guess, the perception of you going into the house? Yeah. I think going into any sort of competition, being a former winner of a show is definitely going to have eyes on you. Mm -hmm. I knew going into as a winner of the amazing race, let alone the only winner from amazing race competing, I knew that eyes would be on me for sure. And, you know, if they watched my season, they would know that I, I helped build a very strong alliance with other teams on season 32 of the amazing race. And so there's a social game there that I think would be threatening if people did watch my season. 
an amazing race. Like we obviously get some drama and some fights and arguments and stuff, but nothing crazy. Like the challenge is known for drama, fights, hookups, going in where you like, let me steer. Like, how did you feel like you were going to navigate if anything like that came up? Yeah. I mean, like, I think at the end of the day, like you obviously want to stay out of the drama because you don't want a lot of people looking at you. And especially as a a former winner, I'm like, no, I don't want all eyes on me. But at the same time, you can kind of use drama to your advantage if you really are reading the room correctly. Um, So I, I welcomed it because it, it, to me, it shows some sort of crack in other relationships. So it's just being observant and what you do with that information. Who did you see, I guess, you know, when you first arrived, who did you think were maybe your bit, like for your own game, you look around first day and you're like, wow, okay, these are the people that are threats here. Anyone yeah. stick out? My first impression was I was afraid of the Big Brother 23 crew. They are all very close. I watched their season. I follow all of them on social media. They all continued to hang out after their show. And they just have this camaraderie within their cast that I felt was going to be very threatening. And um, that was something that really stuck out to me because there were six of them. and. You know, in these types of shows, there's strengths and numbers. Um, so that was my biggest concern going into the challenge. Were you also thinking, well, at least if there's six of them, the target's on them and not me? Yeah, oh, there's definitely a voice in the back of my head that's saying that. It's, again, using that information to your benefit. But we'll have to see what information I use to my benefit when the show airs. For sure. So... If Amazing Race had called again, would you have said yes? If Survivor, if Big Brother, which of these shows are you still, are you interested in doing? Look, you know me. I love all these shows. I live tweet about them when they, when they air every single week. I love reality competition. It's a once in a lifetime adventure. I think if any of these shows ever called me, I'd be crazy to say no. I think the only one I would have any sort of like hesitation with would be Big Brother, just because I don't like the idea of being confined and obviously living in a compound on the Challenge USA with 27 other big personalities was a lot to navigate. So I think Survivor is 100% more my speed. And if they ever called for me to do that, I would literally leave tomorrow. Um, so, but of course, Amazing Race, I, I, same thing. Like if they called me and said, hey, we want you on a flight tomorrow, I would be like, hell yeah, sign me up. Let's do it. The world is waiting. <laughs> would you do the challenge again? I definitely think if the timing was right, I would do the challenge again for sure. I feel like you're the only person who told me they would possibly pay, play Big Brother, which I get why no one wants to do. It's a lot. It's a lot. But I feel I like just, you would be good at it, James. Thank you, Sharon. I mean, I just think I'm a little too emotional. And I think being confined would be my biggest issue. Um, but never say never. 